Hi, I'm David from Levika Photography, and today we're checking out the Sony 28mm F2. Finally, finally I got around to doing this. And uh, I just want to let you guys know, this is as good as I think it is. So let's go ahead and dive into this and check this thing out. It's extremely light, a very tiny little lens. Now there is no optical stabilization on this lens. But I really don't find that a big deal because Sony's optical stabilization on their lenses are kind of a joke anyway. At only giving you one to one and a half stops advantage. Now this is an aspherical design and it has extra low dispersion in it, but the distortion is actually very well controlled and easy to fix on this. And it is a uh, focus by wire, meaning there is no bump stop on it. Uh, it's nine blades, the blades are curved and it's nine elements in eight groups which makes it very compact and light okay so the lens flare now this is off of a CFL bulb it is very well controlled I and mean, really good much better than the 35 millimeter f1.8 let's go to LED here now with LED you do see just a little bit of green haze and right there that's probably as worse as we can get it but still really good. I mean those rounded aperture blades really make a difference. So the ghosting isn't bad at all. All right, so let's take a look at some of the photos that are actually shot with this. Now this is on the A6000. You can see this is a JPEG straight off the camera and you know the camera corrects perfectly for this lens. So if we open up the raw file, then we get a, a pretty good idea. You can see the amount of distortion over here and uh, let's go to lens correction here and go into distortion and see how much it takes to actually fix it in this case it's nine in other cases I've seen it as low as three so it just kind of varies on how close you actually are to your object but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of what the actual barrel distortion is doing now let's take a look at some video and I'll just play this really quick. Now you can see that in video it obviously it corrects for it very well. Okay now this is uh, shot 10 inches away which is just about as close as you can focus with this. This is at f2 and you can see it's very sharp. Uh, right here there are certain parts in this image that are actually slightly overexposed but the bokeh in the background is actually very good. And as far as chromatic aberrations around our object, even though we've got a lot of daylight in there, we do see some leaking greens and blues and cyans, you know, around the, the leaves. But our actual main leaf, aside from this little fuzzy side right here, really looks pretty good. I mean, it's really sharp overall. All right, let's just have a quick look at the sky. And this one here was shot at f2. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and take a look. And at f2, the closer we get to infinity, this thing actually stays very sharp. And this is really impressive because it doesn't look like there's hardly any chromatic aberrations the farther away you get in the object. And the depth of field is good. You know, the brick wall in front of the roof behind it, you know, even though it's not quite in focus at f2, this actually looks pretty amazing. Let's look at the vignetting on the A6000. This is what I like. On the A6000, there's almost no vignetting, and this is wide open at f2, at a, or yeah, at f2 at uh, one fiftieth of a second, and no vignetting distortion at all. All right, so let's take a look at the A7R with the same lens. So we're going full frame now. This gives us a full 28 millimeter. Don't mind the red. That's just my uh, highlight. Uh, warning showing me where it's blown out but this is because it was shot on an overcast day so if we just take a look at the corner really quick up here just to see kind of what we're looking at we do have some chromatic aberrations and this is because this is an overcast day and this is in the extreme corner but the nice thing about this lens uh, this this doesn't show up on the a6000 because it crops it out but on the a7r you do see it but it's easily fixable so if we click on our chromatic aberration tool, go to the purple amount, let's increase this to about four. It seems to take it all the way out. So let's go ahead and open the image. 
Okay, now looking at this image here, I just want to let you know I didn't correct for any barrel distortion, so it's not noticeable in this shot at all. Now if we actually zoom in here after it's corrected, it looks like it did a great job with the chromatic aberrations. I just don't see any in here anywhere. And that is excellent looking corners. And the center is just insanely sharp. Let's take a look at the bokeh on the A7R. And we'll just go ahead and open this as is. Okay, and this is shot at F2. And if we zoom in here and take a look, everything looks really sharp. We do have just a little bit of kind of a haloing edge that would be considered a chromatic aberration around the red area. You know, overall, once you zoom out, I think it looks fine. And again, we didn't correct for any barrel distortion, so, you know, I still think it looks okay. Now let's go ahead and zoom into this at 100% and just take a quick look around. Now, I do have a little bit of motion on this side in the trees, but that could have been because it was windy. But the cars themselves look very sharp. And at F4, this is actually very impressive on how much we have in focus. I mean, really, it looks like it's pretty much almost the entire image. You know, aside from this planner right here, this is really strong. So it has good bokeh when you need it, but it has excellent increased depth of field when you want it. Okay, so this image here is at F16 at 20th of a second. And we're not going to correct for anything. We're just going to open it. All right, so our planner, all the way from the upper corner, all the way down. You can see the corner down here. The reflection is incredibly sharp. Same with this corner. And then if we go up to this one, this actually looks excellent. And again, no real signs of any major uh, chromatic aberrations at this point. So even though this has slight barrel distortion, you don't see it in this image. And this actually turns out that, you know, I, I think this is an excellent landscape lens, especially on the A7R when you're cranking it up to F11, F16. It just seems like you have endless depth of field. But then again, you can use it all the way down to F2 and not have any issues. So really, it's just a cool lens. This is what the vignetting looks like on the A7R. Now, this is just F2 shot against a wall, and uh, but it isn't bad. This is F2.8, and dramatically improved and almost gone by F4 and F5.6. You can't even tell. So really pretty impressive with how well this thing handles vignetting. And on the A6000... There's almost no vignetting, even at F2, because you're cropping down inside this area probably about, yeah, I'm guessing about here. That's what you're seeing on the A6000. So, you know, really not much there to worry about. Anyway, let's check out some video done with this lens. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... I know that wasn't very exciting, but I love this little thing. It's faster than the 35mm f1.8. The autofocus on this thing is excellent. I mean, very fast. It's an aspherical design, but it doesn't have that weird mustache effect that a lot of other aspherical designs have. It does have some ED uh, extra low dispersion glass in it. Uh, it's got nine blades. All the blades are curved, so the bokeh is actually very good for being, you know, a, a normal wide-angle lens. And it does have some 
barrel distortion that gives it almost kind of a very faint fisheye effect. Now, if you shoot in JPEG mode, the camera corrects for it. If you shoot video on all Sony cameras, they all correct for it. So really in RAW, that's the only time they actually need to correct for it. Holy cow, it is raining like a mother. I don't know if you can hear it over the microphone, but man, it's coming down. All of my YouTube videos from now on will probably be filmed on the A6000 with this lens. So just to give you guys an idea of what it'll be like, I mean, it's going to be a workhorse for the future, but I love the fact that I can use it on my A7R. But outside of that, I hope you guys like this review. Leave a comment. Uh, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.